Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Hunter and I am the field CTO at Ninja One. Today we'll be looking at backup capabilities using Ninja One Backup. Ninja One Backup is enabled in the Apps Exchange, accessible in the top right via the four squares. Once enabled, you'll need to select where your AWS Cloud Storage bucket should be hosted and which features of Ninja One Backup you'd like to use. All AWS storage is licensed from Ninja One, so no additional provisioning is required. Both Windows and Mac OS support file and folder or document backup, while only Windows supports a full image backup. After enabling at the global level, you can easily turn on Ninja One Backup for your managed organizations. You can configure which devices should be backed up, as well as how network bandwidth should be throttled. If you'd prefer to back up to local network storage, you can add in the credentials and IP address of the network share. Backups can be stored both locally as well as in the AWS cloud. Now that backup is enabled, a backup plan needs to be created in your policy. For a file and folder backup, we'll need to define a schedule as well as which folders should be backed up. You can also configure exclusions to prevent certain file extensions from being backed up. Back on the first tab, the revisions represent how many different restore points a particular file will have. Revisions can be limited based on either a revision count, for example, 15 different restore points for each file being backed up, or based on time, trimming out anything older than, say, 30 days. In the event that both options are utilized, whichever occurs first will take precedence. A third option allows for files deleted by the end user to be removed from the backup to conserve space, but a sub-option will retain the last copy of a deleted file. This is useful in the event that an end user accidentally deletes something. For convenience, scripts can be executed both immediately before and immediately after a backup job. The very bottom option determines where this backup is stored, either in the cloud, locally on network storage, or both, where the backup is first created locally and then synced to the cloud. For image backups, the creation of a backup plan is very similar. Image backups operate by partition rather than individual files or folders. Now that the backups have been created, let's look at how we can manage and restore this data. Back on the Dashboard tab, the Backup tab will display usage in addition to recent backup history. Notifications can be configured to alert or generate tickets in the event that a backup has failed, and the history will report back error codes indicating a potential reason for the failure. To restore files and folders, we can navigate to a device, open up the Restore Manager, identify our file or folder, and restore it directly to the device. Files and folders can be restored to the same device in their original location, but also to a completely different backup-enabled device in the same organization. This provides a quick and easy workflow to getting critical files to operational devices in the event of a machine becoming non-operational. File and folder backups also support self-service through the end-user portal. A user can view and retrieve files from their backups if given the proper permissions, but will never be able to delete existing backups or modify them in any way. For image backups, individual files and folders can be retrieved for convenience as long as the backup is stored in the cloud. Full image restores will require the Image Restore Manager, which can create boot media for an ISO or USB drive. All that's required is a valid encryption key generated from the Ninja One portal. This has been a high-level overview of Ninja One Backup. If you have any questions or would like to see more, please reach out.